All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Up North Hockey podcast, our fourth Up North Hockey podcast of this hockey season. And this podcast is sponsored by GNB Environmental. For all your air filter and disinfectant spraying needs, visit gbenvironmental.com. Disinfect your business, facility, or transportation fleet. The experts at GNB Environmental provide electrostatic disinfectant spraying to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus, distributing a positive charge that effectively enables disinfectant to attach to all surface areas where viruses, bacteria, and fungi live, destroying them instantly. Electrostatic spraying is quick and safe. On-site testing is included. GNB Environmental is a Better Business Bureau A plus member. Call 952-469-3024 or visit GB Environmental. And now joining us today on the podcast, we have uh, Grand Rapids Greenway Lightning head coach Brad Hajduk and uh, also uh, senior forward Claire Vekic. Uh, we thank both of you for joining us here tonight. And uh, how's the team feeling? We just got the news that uh, hockey, well, practice will start next Monday for practice and then games will start January 14th. How's the team feeling? <clears throat> Uh, you know, as you know, and, and having covered uh, high school hockey here this fall, that it's been a roller coaster, I think, for, for kids, coaches, ADs, parents, everyone kind of anticipating the start of the season. And and now that uh, we really do have a green light, even though I think some people behind their back have their, their fingers crossed waiting for the, the shoe to drop, uh, um, you know, that just isn't going to be the case, obviously. There, there may be individual hiccups along the way here, but, you know, the momentum's there. I think things are uh, where they need to be in terms of having successful seasons and, uh Give the state high school league credit where it was easy to maybe be critical of them uh, in the in the summer and fall. You know they kind of put this back on uh, the Department of Health and the, the governor's office to to make a decision. They put out their proposals that I think is uh, as high school programs that we like. It's going to extend our season out, and we're about to start a three and a half month uh, season and, and fit a lot of games in two a week and. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think people realize these kids, boys and girls, that uh, it's going to be a grind. And, you know, where we normally end our season in February, whether you're, you know, losing in the quarterfinals or going to the state tournament, we're looking at Easter now. And, um, you know, same true on the boys' side. So, you know, it, the anticipation's high. Obviously, there's some changes that, uh, you know, I don't want to say uneasiness, but uh, that are maybe a surprise or things that uh, kids are going to have to adapt to. But uh, if that's what it takes to play, I know that's where the girls are at. And I'll let Claire, just, uh, you know, I'll let Claire speak to that as well. Um, I think I'm mostly just excited and relieved to finally be able to get back on the ice because like Brad said, it's been a roller coaster and being a multi-sport athlete, like not only has my hockey season been taken away, but my volleyball and softball seasons have been taken away as well. So I think finally being able to start the season up again and I mean, we have to wear masks and whatever, but I'm just glad that we're able to play and have a season at all. I think everybody's excited. You know, I totally agree with that. Um, you, you know, I feel bad. You have a, a lot of people have had a lot of their sports taken away from them. And, you know, the one thing, though, is you do get hockey back here for three and a half months. And, you know, I can't imagine me being a hockey player knowing that I wasn't going to get to start my season when it normally started. Um, that would have been totally a big letdown, especially – especially when, you know, volleyball got cut short. You didn't know where you were going to stand coming into hockey season. So for that to happen, that's got to be a big letdown. But now you got something to look forward to. Um, that kind of brings me into my next question. How has is, how is you handled that in your free time? And how has it been with the rest of your teammates? How, you know, not being able to be around them, not to, you know, you know communicate with them is one thing, but to be with them in the locker room, to be with them in the practice rink. Um, how have you guys kind of stayed in contact and how have you guys stayed healthy as far as, you know, keeping that spirit up a little bit? Go yeah, ahead, I, think, I think something that makes it really difficult is being from separate schools because like I'm from Greenway, but there's also a lot of kids that are from Grand Rapids. And I think that's another thing that makes us so special is we have to go out of our way to see each other. And so I have been on the outdoor rink almost every single day skating and one of my teammates jazzy bischoff they have a outdoor rink in the back of their yard so we've been there a few times like a lot of our teammates and then a lot of the boys as well and i also think just like being hybrid and not being able to go to school like being on the rinks and hanging out with each other outside of school and stuff like that is really important to stay like positive and together as a team because I mean, 
we don't see each other in school and we don't have a hockey season now. So getting on those rinks and doing that other stuff is really important. Yeah, I believe that. I, I really do. I mean, I believe that just, you know, what little time you can get with other people, you know, your teammates and keep that morale up is great. And that kind of brings me to you, coach. Um, how have you yourself been dealing with not, not being able to see your players, uh, knowing that there's no practice, not being at the rink yourself. Um, I know I'm sure you communicate with them too through, you know, Zooms or emails or whatever, but how, what have you done and how are you dealing with that part of it? Yeah, you know, I, uh, yeah, everyone, uh, especially in the hockey community, said their own way of coping. And, you know, with the high school season being different than the youth hockey season, early on it meant I got to see my kids quite a bit more. I've got a, I've got a Pee Wee Double A in Grand Rapids and a, and a 10 U and, and for a little while it meant I was traveling to see games that I wouldn't have otherwise gotten to see. And so, I mean, it, I want to, I don't want to say that it, I would have rather been at the rink with uh, my high school girls, uh, you know, setting goals and, and uh, grinding and practice and get ready for games and game setups and sitting with our coaching staff and, and planning the things that we need to do to get ready and, um, and obviously that wasn't the case here early on. And now we're all in the same boat over the six weeks and, and everything's been shut down. And back to Claire's point, I think uh, whether it's my own kids or, or our, uh, you know, almost 30 girls, we've, we've just tried to have the messaging out that, you know, do what you can to get out uh, on the outdoor rinks. And as it, as it would turn out, we've had uh, maybe one of the better Decembers we've ever had uh, for being out on the ice, uh, whether it's a lake or some of the local rinks and, uh, and, you know, again, back to Claire's point where she and some of her teammates really communicated well and I think uh, took advantage of what was out there, whether it was uh, some of their peers or uh, a lot of buddies getting together in the outdoors where it was uh, something that they wanted uh, people doing to stay healthy anyways and not be indoors as much. So uh, as far as messaging uh, and communicating in the time since then, you know, it's, it's sadly, it's been, you know, too much of that. I'm, I'm tired of, uh, you know, remind 101s and, you know, you want to be encouraging and you know, you're the role model and, uh, you know, kind of people follow that lead. And, you know, I've said, uh, you know, let's put our nose down and, and be ready to go when the time comes. And here we are finally. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about my kids getting back. And, but more than anything, it's, uh, you know, I found my, my, myself sometimes in November coming home from school because I was in school, whether it was hybrid or distance and I'd come home and it was still light out. And normally I'd be at practice and I'd kind of walk around the house looking for something to do. And that's not an experience I've had for about 15 years. So, uh, it was a real adjustment, and uh, and like I said, we we have great leadership in this group, starting with Claire as our captain and our three assistant captains, and you know we've been doing uh, virtual training through uh, the the center in Grand Rapids to keep the girls moving. But I just know that uh, they're hungry and they're ready to go. And uh, re regardless of the circumstances or what it looks like starting Monday, uh, we got a group that's motivated and hungry and ready to go, and and we have a group that should be hungry because. Uh, you know, we like the group we have and we're excited about the, uh, the expectations and the goals that we're going to have for ourselves. And that's excellent. That's exactly the way to have the attitude for it. Um, you know, I know that this team's really, probably really hungry to come into a play a season. Um, you know, last year was kind of a growing season, it looked like. And I, I do believe that uh, what I've seen in the games that I did on the radio, um, it, this team is – they're they're there i mean it just needs a little more gelling it seemed like but i i'm i'm thinking that there claire is one excellent leader i noticed you know even i watched her in the bench when she was in the bench on the ice when she wasn't with the puck how she's leading for example constantly throughout the whole you know the time at the rink um it uh it's what it takes and i think it's that's what it's going to take this year is uh, once i think once everybody gets back i just feel that everybody's going to gel and this could be a really, really, really good season for Grand Rapids. Maybe a lot of teams are really looking to get back, but I think this group of girls, between Claire said, between the, the two different schools, um, it is a special thing. So for them to get in there and gel together, um, I'm excited to watch the Grand Rapids girls play hockey this year. Yeah, I mean, Claire can tell you as well as anyone, and I'll let her, but, you know, we a couple of years ago, she got to play with another, you know, Division One hockey player who's, who's had uh, great success at the uh, Division One level in Sadie Peart. And last year, uh, you know, the team had to kind of grow around her, and it was it was about patience. And, you know, her team uh, in, in hockey, in AA hockey, was maybe in a little bit different place than her, her volleyball team was that had that experience and were coming back from a state tournament berth. And, and uh, this year's group, you know, we're going to – we're going to have a group that's, you know, fully experienced. Uh, I, I love uh, our team from the net outs. Uh, you know, I like the idea that we're going to be able to skate three lines and, and have two lines that for sure that can score goals. And, and, uh, and while I think our, our D is probably our biggest growth area, I think we have some nice potential there. So, like I said, it's going to be once it starts here, uh, 
you know, 18 games and we're pretty much playing two a week all the way through the middle part of March before playoffs start, uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to start to feel normal for us again. And kids are going to look forward to being at the rink and, you know, not every team has, uh, gets to have expectations. We do. And, and I'm excited to have Claire leading the way. Yeah, I am too. too, too. You know, that brings me to another point. You're losing, uh, Emily Trask last year was your goalie, uh, played, uh, 99% of your games. Uh, what do you see for the goalies coming up this year? And, you know, um, you said from the goalies on, you feel comfortable with that. Uh, is it going to be one goalie or is it, are you just kind of waiting to see what happens? Yeah, good question. Uh, we did. Emily was a two-year starter for us. Uh, we have uh, two goalies. We have three goalies total, uh, two uh, juniors that are, are going to compete. Uh, both are very, very good athletes. Uh, Good soccer players, uh, Kenny Martinson and Kenzie Cole. Uh, Kenzie's actually seen pretty extensive varsity time. And last year actually was injured from a soccer injury that, that set her back. I, it would have been plausible to you know, see her platooning with, uh, with Emily during the year. And that just never materialized uh, based mostly on the injury. And, and Emma was uh, a good anchor for us. She certainly grew as a goalie. Uh, but I really like the, the competitiveness between uh, Kenny Martinson and, and Kenzie Cole. They really push each other. They have a great relationship. Uh, you know, Kenzie Cole has been a national camp goalie, uh, HP 15s. You know, last year they didn't do the high performance stuff uh, because of COVID and, and has college ambitions for uh, for good reason. So between the two of them, uh, we're in a good place. Uh, you know, uh, again, looking forward to having them backstop. I think one thing that sets Kenzie apart from from uh, any other goalie I've seen is both her athleticism and her ability to play the puck. So when you do get a chance to see her play this year, you're going to see someone who is making head man passes, making breakout passes on the power play, uh, is really aggressive and almost becomes like a third defenseman on on retrievals and breakouts. And uh, and like I said, and, and Kenny herself is uh, a very, very, very good goalie. So we're in a good place uh, as, it, as it comes to net minors. Well, that's one, good to hear. Excellent. Just one question for you, Brad. Uh, what do you know about the state tournament? Do you know if it's going to go on? Uh, I've heard some things from the high school league that they were going to talk about. It. Of course, I mean, we want the season to get underway first here on January 14th. But what have you heard when, uh, uh, regarding that, if there's going to be a state tournament or not for uh, boys and girls hockey? Yeah, good question. That, of course, would extend out to the other winter sports, too. Uh, so what's going to happen? Uh, first of all, Eric Martins is the executive director, and he's committed to having a state tournament. He's on record saying that. Uh, and he's told the uh, – and not just the Department of Health, but then the exec board that votes. So uh, their next meeting is February, and I want to say 4th, it could be 6th, uh, that they'll meet and they'll finalize that. What you're going to hear in January is you are going to hear uh, them come out with, the, the, there's a return to play committee that comes up with uh, the plans. And they'll probably, like they had for the season, they'll probably have, you know, two, three, four scenarios about how best to pull off a state tournament for each sport, uh, whether they're staggered or not. Uh, obviously, you can expect smaller venues this year. Uh, but I'm pretty bullish on a state tournament. I think uh, both in boys and girls, you're going to see a, uh, a, a state tournament either right before or right after Easter. And I would expect an announcement in February. Obviously, the, you know, the, the outlier there is the health thing that, uh, you know, we're now eight, nine months into. And, and obviously, that's headed the right direction as well. Um, so that's kind of where it's at. You should hear some uh, inklings of it in January in terms of what they're thinking. But the vote probably will not happen until early February. But, uh, but like I said, I, I feel real good that uh, kids are going to be playing to get to a state tournament this year. Well, that's really good news. But for you, Claire, uh, when you played uh, volleyball, of course, there was no state tournament. So that was, it would obviously be tough to uh, go through that again if your team did uh, win the section championship. But uh, I don't remember, did you guys win the section championship for uh, volleyball this year? Or what, uh, we what actually, it, our season was cut short just of playoffs so we didn't even get a chance to play in playoffs and yeah I think that was that was really devastating I mean coming off of a state tournament like consolation win last year and not even being able to like see where we could have gone this year and we were we improved I think we were even better this year than we were last year so to not be able to prove that to everybody else kind of is a bummer but I really hope we get a hockey tur state tournament. And if we don't, then, yeah, you're right. That'll be really devastating, too. Well, we can do is keep our fingers crossed, and ho hopefully that happens, you know. Yeah, it really would be. But, no, I uh, – first, Claire, I want to congratulate you on being a finalist for the Miss Volleyball. That uh, top five, five pick, that's excellent. Um, Thank you. You know, I just – you know, even though your season was cut short, you know, that's something that you're going to live with being a top five finalist. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just, you know, to be, and you know, and I know from what I've heard before is, you know, softball is a great sport for you too. You know, to, to be a three sport athlete and to be one of the best in, in, in the, each of those sports in the state of Minnesota is pretty amazing to me. Um, I know there's quite a few people pulling for you. Uh, this hockey thing is, you know, I can't wait to see you play again. The few games I watched you play last year, you impressed me. And like I said earlier, um, your leadership on the ice in the bench watching you is amazing and keep that up continue to do that because only people are only gonna they're only gonna you know feed off you you know they're gonna they're, it's a contagious thing people you know other players like to like that stuff but uh, one thing you know I want to mention too is I've known your dad for years and you know how would it feel for you to get back into being a state tournament even though your dad was on that 1992 team that won the Tier 2 tournament for the first time that they had Tier 2 for Greenway back in the day. How would that make you feel to get to where he was? Oh, that would make me feel great. I mean, we've talked about it before, and I've heard so many stories about my dad as an athlete, and I've been compared, not really compared, but compared to him a little bit, just in the same, like in hockey and softball and whatnot. And I think I've always strived to be like him, and he's showed me a lot about leadership and hard work. And I think that's why I'm the athlete I am today is because he's taught me, he's coached me my entire life. He's taught me all of those things. And to get to where he was, I think that would kind of be a goal achieved for me. Yeah, I, I believe so. I mean, your dad, I played softball against your dad for years. I played hockey against him. Uh, your uncle Derek played. That you, those, they're great athletes. And I'm sure you you you've learned a lot from them too um, through it. So, no, I, I wish you the best in what you do. And you know, I, you know, being a commit to Bemidji State, um, how does that uh, fit into this whole thing? Knowing that that's where you're going to head next, how does that feel? I think it's a little bit frustrating to to not have a full season this year, especially when this is probably the most important year I was going to have, and to not be able to start out the season and see Brad on the rink and I mean to have everybody else helping me and improving as much as I can this year before college it kind of stinks but I mean we're getting a season eventually so I just I guess I need to work my hardest and do the everything I need to do to take it to the next level for next year yeah and no, I want to know I want to know uh so are you gonna so you're committed there for hockey have you thought about playing like volleyball or softball there too obviously it'd be tough uh doing that at the college ranks but um are you gonna try playing a different sport or are you just gonna commit to hockey I was re I'm really thinking about it my dad really wants me to play softball and I mean I love softball I would I would do it I just don't know if I would be able to with the amount of time that I need to dedicate to hockey so I guess I don't know that's a decision for the future that I need to make and talk to my coaches about but yeah I'm definitely thinking about it yeah you don't see that too oft too often in the college ring so that'd be really cool to see and obviously obviously you're capable of uh, you know playing uh, multiple sports at the college ranks so that'd be really cool yeah so Eric, do you have anything else before we well, go? Well, you know, um, I guess the only thing is, you know, it's kind of been the inevitable question about uh, what they've talked about now. Um, how are the players going to react to having to wear some kind of shield mask or something while they play the game? What are your reactions on that, Brad? That's a good question. I, you know, I think we kind of knew it was coming. Uh, the, of course, the other, the other big one that uh, people are talking about is, uh, you know, fans and attendance, which uh, – you know, we've, we've heard uh, some positive things behind the scenes about where that's headed, at least on a limited basis, apparent basis, and it'll be public uh, later on. But, um, you know, as far as masks, uh, both Wade, Coach Wade Chido and I have, have uh, talked to and reached out to some people in Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, connections out on the East Coast, both college and, and high school that have been wearing masks since summer. And uh, believe it or not, and I, I imagine all of us can identify with it, although the rigorous activity piece is part of it. You know, we remember what it was like to put a mask on for the first time and go into a store and it just didn't feel right or going to school the first day. And it just it didn't it just so foreign to us. And what we've kind of heard from those athletes is, is that, uh, you know, you become more conditioned just wearing the, 
the mat. And I don't mean more conditioned overall. I just mean your body conditions itself or, or it's uh, where it's at. So um, again, they've been using it at the college level uh, at a few colleges out east that, that the states require it quite a bit at high school. Uh, again, starting in Wisconsin, Michigan, and many of the East Coast states. I think the state of Virginia and a few others. And uh, kids have been wearing them. And, and uh, it's I think it's a temporary inconvenience. I think uh, kids are adaptable, going to do well with it. And I think the parents are the ones that are probably going to uh, vent the, the, the most. Uh, and I don't blame anyone for being frustrated. Uh, I get that. But at the same time, these kids, uh, they want to play. They're going to do what it takes to play. And uh, if this is what's deemed to be uh, uh, important for the kids to play right now, we're going to roll with it. And, and hopefully it's something that uh, as we get further on into this three and a half month season, uh, is something that can uh, we can roll back if, uh, if the conditions allow. But it's doable. It's being done. Uh, obviously, I don't think it's ideal. But um, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, we want to play, we want to compete, we want to prepare. And uh, Claire's a good example of that. She's willing to do whatever it takes to, to compete and, uh, and get her team where she wants to get them. No, I agree with that. That's excellent. Um, you know, you're, you're right. The first time I put a mask on and walked in the store, I thought, wow, why is everybody looking at me? You know, why does this feel uncomfortable? Um, it's, it's one of those things that now it just seems second nature because it's what we have to do if we want to go to the store, we want to go do something. Um, so I agree that the, the body will adapt to it. Um, it's just, just something we wish we didn't have to do, but you know, and hopefully in time this will pass. And so, but no, I just, that's all I had for you guys. I really appreciate everything, Brad, coming on here and talking, and I hope to talk to you more often this, this winter. Claire, I wish you the best of luck with everything you do. And I will turn it back over to Blake and let Blake finish up here and wish you guys the best this season. Oh, yeah, Thank good luck. Thank you so much. Thanks, Eric and Blake, and we look forward to seeing up north hockey at the rink uh, and GRG hockey. Uh, again, appreciate the time. Yeah, we have a couple games on our radar. Um, coming up in January here, I, I was able to see your schedule before the podcast here. I think I saw you guys open up against, who was it, Duluth Marshall at home? Correct, yes. Okay, and then you guys, and I saw, we're playing, doing the – uh, the North Red County game that's on the 19th, I believe, or somewhere in there, somewhere uh, middle of January. So we look forward to seeing you guys play. And, of course, good luck once you guys do get underway. Good luck with practice on Monday coming up quick here. And I uh, hope you guys have a happy new year. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. You as well. Happy new year. Thanks. Yeah, happy new year to you guys.